You guys kept teasing me about making a video like this, so I had to do it. Now let's talk about which one of these Mac Studios you should not buy. So we bought three of these and we've been testing them out over the last two weeks or so, and only one of these are kind of disappointing. And now Apple showed these off on stage with the M1 Ultra chip and the Ultra Fusion fabric that is insanely fast is saying things like it just is so insanely quick that it literally performs like one chip and shows up as a single chip, which is incredible. But with what we've been seeing with real world performance, it is kind of lackluster. Now, one thing that I gotta tell you guys, you guys tease me about this and people talk about YouTubers buying a bunch of stuff and just returning everything. Well, with the MacBooks, we actually bought nine of them. I bought eight and out of the eight that I bought, we only returned one. We gave one away and we still have the rest for testing. Now, one of these, like I said, you should not buy. We did a crazy comparison between all three of these and it's a super, super long video and what I want to do here is give you an updated buyer's suggestion guide as well as point out a few key issues and why they are happening so that you guys can make an informed decision without having to watch that super long video which a lot of you guys didn't watch but if you're gonna drop a ton of money you should definitely check out that video now one of these has 128 gig of RAM and that is the one that is going back today because it is just absolutely insane it's overkill we tested out 32 gigs versus 64 in our MacBook Pro comparison. And even though I ran parallels with Windows 11 running benchmarks on both, bunch of tabs, even exporting video and photos at the same time, the difference was really insignificant. So definitely do not get 128 gigs of RAM. Now, as far as the 48 core versus 64, we expected to see a good amount of differences. And in some benchmarks, we actually did see a noticeable difference, but the scale and the performance gain for that extra thousand dollars doesn't really scale linearly. But what made it even worse is that for real world testing, when we were throwing a ton of uh, graphics intensive load on the system, the scaling was horrendous. And in some tests, the craziest ones, where we're brushing both the CPU and the GPU, we barely saw a difference, which made the extra thousand dollars really hard to swallow. Now, we talked to some different people, people that are engineers, software coders, people that actually work for Apple, and they're saying that in fact, we do have to wait for software updates. Even though the M1 Ultra shows up as one chip, there still has to be a lot of software updates made to better utilize not only the 64 core, but even the 48 core. With that said, if we're looking at total performance and how well it scales, the M1 Max model is actually excellent. It scales just as well as the M1 chip. So if you want bang for the buck, that is definitely the one to go for. Now, personally, the one for us is the $4,000 model. You get 64 gigs of RAM, which is enough for almost everybody. And what really is, stands out to us are the quad uh, encoders. So if you're limited by the encoding speed for video, we put out six to seven videos a week, this is what's gonna give us twice as fast export speeds and then having the extra overhead, overhead for the GPU power. So this is the one that I would recommend for most of you guys. If you need more graphics performance, you do video editing and you also do other things like coding, photo editing, things like that because the CPU that's in here, the 20 core, also gives us some really nice improvements and really good scaling. So overall, what you learn is that you should not get the highest end one, unless money really doesn't matter. But the extra $1,800 that we spent on this one right here is barely making a difference in real world testing. Whereas the, this $4,000 one, yes, it is expensive. It's a lot of money, but the performance is incredible. And in the past, when we bought an iMac Pro for $5,000, I mean, this thing absolutely destroys it. Now, we've been thinking about making a video comparing this M1 Ultra to an iMac Pro and the highest on 2020 iMac. We just don't know if enough people wanna see it. 
So if you guys do, let me know down in the comments section below. Now, another question you guys are asking about is if the extra SSD, the, for example, the four terabyte or the eight terabyte models will make a difference in the real world as far as performance and that we should have bought the $8,000 one with eight terabytes. Now, in all of our testing, even going from the M1 Mac mini, that's about 2,500, going up to just this higher end one that's twice as fast, it's not really making a difference because even for things like 8K video editing, for example, red footage, that only streams at about 300 to 350 megabytes per second. And this SSD goes up to like 5,000. So having the extra capacity with a little bit faster speeds won't make a difference in the real world. Personally, I think up to two terabytes is a nice sweet spot where you have more capacity, but you're not just really spending a ton of cash. So who is the 64 core model actually worth it for? Well, for those that need the absolute most performance, even though uh, you're not getting a really good deal, uh, and those that will use just the GPU alone with no CPU or memory bottlenecks or encoder bottlenecks, it can be beneficial. For example, if you're doing noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve, that just hits the GPU, and that's another example of where eGPUs were excellent for. Now here, when I tested it out, we got 20 FPS for the 64 car model and 16 frames per second for the 48. Now that sounds like a pretty good jump. It's a 25% increase in performance, but that is actually a 50% increase in cores. So we should be seeing a 50% jump and that just proves to you that even when the applications are fully optimized and if they can actually access the extra performance as best as it can, that is the biggest difference that you will see. So it's about a thousand bucks for 25% more GPU performance if you're only limited by the GPU. And with that, we don't know how long it will take to have the optimizations for the programs that you are using. It could be a couple months or it could be a year or longer. Now with that, just like with any tech, for example, high-end RTX graphics cards, you know that you have to pay a lot more money for not that much more performance. It is standard in the industry, so you're always best off getting a medium range configuration or graphics card chip. And with that, if you care about resale value, you always get a better deal for the mid-range products and especially for the configurations that come standard that Apple sells. For example, we have the $2,000 configuration and the $4,000. So those will have the best resale value if you want to sell it a couple years from now. Now with that, we need to talk about the upcoming M2 series ships. We know that with these, we do have some bottlenecks and people talk about memory bottlenecks or maybe this uh, connector that connects the two M1 Max chips. And with the M2 chip, not only are we going to get better performance and maybe higher frequencies, which are going to give us a good jump, but also they could remove some of these bottlenecks as well. So personally, I would be more comfortable buying something that's more mid-range and then being able to sell it for not that much of a loss and then upgrade instead of losing a ton of money on a high-end one. Now with that, I want to remind you guys that even the M1 Max model is so much faster than previous Intel Max, but it both uh, off based off the efficiency, the encoders, uh, and also just the unified memory. It's a huge improvement. So if you're upgrading from previous Macs, even Mac Pros, this gives you a really nice jump for a solid low price. Keep that in mind. So there you guys go. Those are some updates as far as what we found with these higher end ones uh, and the suggestions to you guys. If you guys want to see that full 2000 versus 4000 versus $5,800 video, you guys could check that out right there. Tons of tests and tons of detailed info. Vadim did a killer job. But overall, after about two, two and a half weeks of use, we do not recommend this highest end model. You are spending a lot of money for not much gain, and this is the one to go for. Thank you guys for watching. Click that circle above if you guys still want to see that video editing comparison, which we're waiting on Final Cut. Check out one of those videos right over there. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.